What's going on? Thanks for tuning in to today's show. Yeah, today we have a really great show where we interview Dr. Ray and Jean, and they have been helping thousands of couples transform their relationship over the last 20 years. They are the co-founders of a successful counseling center in the Chicagoland area and co-founded Couple Synergy, which is a unique model in coaching couples. Dr. Ray and Jean both have their master's degree in clinical psychology, and Dr. Ray has an additional doctorate in clinical uh, psychology, and they are both co-authors of a book, Good Boundaries, Great Relationships, and are co-hosts of a podcast called Couple Synergy, Real Couples, Real Stories. And today we talk about the six stages of emotional vulnerability and how to be vulnerable in our relationships and why it's important and how to support our partners in that process. Maybe you have trouble being vulnerable with your partner or your partner has trouble being vulnerable. I think this is something we can all work on no matter how good we think we are at Mm -hmm. exposing ourselves, being naked to the world as they describe it. And uh, they give us a lot of great tips to to do that and support the people in our lives uh, who are trying to be more vulnerable. Yeah. And we even briefly talk about whether or not you can be too vulnerable. So really helpful information here. Yeah. And as always, we appreciate you guys tuning in, telling your friends and family about the show, leaving us those five star reviews that really helps us to continue to grow the podcast so it can reach more people and we can continue to just get this great information right alongside you guys. So thank you for all that you do by subscribing and listening, whether you're stuck in traffic right now, going on a run, your kids are screaming in the room next door. We hope that it brings you some relief and valuable information in your day. Enjoy today's episode. Today's episode is brought to you by our online course, Spark My Relationship. Do you guys want to create more passion, improve your communication, and build a stronger, more intimate connection with your partner in less than 90 days? Yes. Sign me up. (laughs) Then you guys need to check out our online course, Spark My Relationship. It is an online course, like I mentioned, that we created with over 15 therapists and psychologists to bring you guys the strategies marriage therapists teach their clients. We talk about it on the show, relationships take work. Sometimes they function pretty easily and you coast along, but we've found the reality is, is you have to do work sometimes and to make them better, to change them so that they're more satisfying for both partners. And you've made it here. You've made it to listening to our show. So you guys probably already know that a little bit. But what you might not know are the specific tools and exercises that you need to create those lasting and positive improvements in your relationship. And like Chase said, change does not happen on its own. It takes hard work. And that's why we created the course. Spark One Relationship is designed to infuse your life and relationship with fresh passion, skills, and wisdom. And it's a self-paced journey that's perfect for turning up the heat, having some fun together, and revolutionizing your intimacy and communication. And just some tools and strategies that the course includes is to how to eliminate unhelpful old habits, develop mindful awareness to help improve your stress management, learn healthy and successful communication tools, create a deeper and more intimate bond, and strengthen your couple microculture, which you will find out what that is. Uh, in the future together. So for our listeners only, we're offering a special of $100 off the course. Visit sparkmyrelationship.com slash unlock to unlock your discount. And there is a 30 day money back guarantee. So there really is no reason to not give it a try. So go to sparkmyrelationship.com slash unlock for $100 off. Hi, Dr. Ray and Jean. Thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Thank you so much for having us, guys. This is really awesome. Great to be here. Yeah, I just wanted to just kind of say thank you guys for what you guys do. I mean, your podcast is an amazing resource for a lot of people. And there aren't too many resources out there when it comes to 
couples and how to improve their relationships. Mm-hmm. So really, thank you for for doing all this. Oh, well, well, thank, thank you. you. For that. Yeah. <laughs> and, and we're just happy to be getting the information and knowledge right along with our listeners and and not to not accept your praise. So th- thank you. But we we really are grateful for people like yourselves who have the professional training and education to really give us the tools from their experiences. So gratitude all around. So, <laughs> so thank you guys for that. And, and in the pre-show, we talked about um, our topic being the six stages of emotional vulnerability. And Sarah and I kind of realized we've never had a whole episode really dedicated, dedicated to yeah. vulnerability. And it's such, obviously we've talked about it, but it's such an important part of healthy relationships with our partner and with ourselves. So we're excited to dive in and talk about this. So why don't we start with having you tell our listeners how you think about vulnerability, what vulnerability looks like, and then we could talk about the six stages. So with vulnerability, there's levels to it. And too often, uh, you know, we just did our weekend intensive in this one couple the woman was like, you know, I'm walking around in my underwear and you're walking around in a winter coat, which is part <laughs> of the analogies we use. And by the end of the weekend, he was like, I think I need to borrow you my coat, <laughs> be a little more vulnerable. And she's like, and I need to button it up. So this is, this is about vulnerability, how safe it is within a relationship and even any relationship you're in, if it's okay to go to the next level or if you're getting information that says, uh, maybe I should not share so much in this particular relationship. You know, one of the examples we use is a bullseye. And that center bullseye is like this bubble that you share with your partner, your person. And too often what happens is that couples bring into that bubble other people like family members, you know, like friends, where now they're starting to stretch that connection that they have with their partner and really challenge, you know, that the level of vulnerability that is necessary in order to have a really long-term committed partnership. So we talk about, you know, if you have more information going to your mother or your best friend, then you're literally starving your relationship. You're taking the food that and the energy that belongs within the relationship and you're giving it out to other people, which ends up having your relationship be in a place where you're really starving. So most people know the concept of boundaries. And so when you think of that bullseye, as you move out from that center circle, now you have the outside concentric circles. And in those circles, you're going to have other relationships where you're not sharing as much, you know, where you're not sharing with, with family that you should be sharing with your partner. And as you move out, then you have friends. And all the way out to the outside circle being acquaintances, where if you just met someone off the street, you're not going to be telling them all of your deep, dark secrets that you should be telling your primary partner. So how can we begin to open up and feel safe in a relationship um, and be more vulnerable? Well, let's go through what the, you know, the circles mean in the stages that we're talking about. So when Dr. A was talking about acquaintances or people you're just meeting way on the outside, that's the surface. And if we think about the surface as being anywhere in the world and you have to deal with the environment, the weather, whatever. So you think about the analogy of you are now wearing a winter coat, hat, gloves, scarves. This is safe. You can talk to anyone like this, even if they're a very toxic person or someone that uh, has even wounded you in the past. You know, you want to talk in terms of like, how are you? I'm fine. What's going on? Same old, same old. You're not, you're not vulnerable. You're not exposing yourself. It's very appropriate. And then that moves into the next level, which is small talk. So now you're walking into someone's home and you're taking your coat off, but you still have your sweater and jeans on and you're just gathering basic information and giving basic information. I do this job. I work in this town. I have this many children, still fairly safe. And then it moves into the third level, which is our beliefs. When we get into beliefs, it's more vulnerable. That's like shorts and a tank top. This is where we are going to hear other people's opinions about the information we shared or we're going to offer opinions. And in this level, this is typically where communication is going to begin to break down because possibly if there's a difference of opinions, it isn't respected. 
And so respect is more important here than if you have a common uh, belief system or not. So if you have a difference of belief system, but you respect each other, it's still safe to continue to share. But if you find that someone's very judgmental or doesn't respect you or you them, then, you know, it's not really okay to go any further inside the, you know, the levels of vulnerability. The fourth level is vision. And vision is about what are your dreams for your life? Those things that you want to strive for or become. And dreams are very vulnerable because they're not concrete yet. And because they're not concrete, it can take one word or one simple thing and you'll never accomplish that dream. And so this is sort of like being in your bathing suit and you're very exposed the, you're exposed to the elements, you're exposed to uh, the vulnerability of other people's opinions. And if you're sharing at this level with someone who doesn't have that type of respect for you, they can destroy your vision. And then the fifth level is feelings. And a lot of times people will walk into a party and start talking about their feelings, especially, you know, our strange political climate that we're in or something like that. And this is like being in your underwear. And when you think about how many people in your life actually get to see you in your underwear, who is it really safe with? You might have, you know, some close friends that you go try and close with or, you know, things like that. But for the most part, it's just your immediate family or your partner that really gets to see you in your underwear and sharing at this level that you should be vetted along the way that your, your opinions are respected. They're supportive of your vision and dreams. And so when you come out with your feelings, That information doesn't end up being used against you or disrespected or uh, you're told your feelings are wrong. That's a really important thing we teach people is feelings are not negotiable. It's what you feel. It's something coming up for healing. And that's a really private, intimate part of being in relationships. And still, this can include other people. There's other people we share at the feeling level with. And then the sixth level is emotional wounds. And emotional wounds is when we're naked. We're completely vulnerable. And emotional wounds typically begin during our childhood. And we think about them like icebergs. And through our life, we get layers and layers of ice. And when we're working with a couple and we hear them talking about fighting about, you know, you didn't put the cap on the toothpaste or whatever the cliche thing is about um, the thing they're fighting about. We know that's only 15% of the stuff above the water and that's happening right now, but it's sitting on that 85% of the iceberg under the water, which are those emotional wounds, which is stuff coming up for healing. And if you are in a really healthy relationship, that is an awesome time to learn how to heal each other. And our slogan is, you know, we get wounded through relationship and we can heal through relationship if we learn how to do that. And so as we're moving through these stages of emotional vulnerability, getting more and more vulnerable, risk the risk increases, the risk of rejection, abandonment. There's also like this need for more safety in the relationship and more openness is required. Unfortunately, though, what happens in, in a relationship is over time, and naturally, this happens with every relationship, is that couples stop being vulnerable with each other. They start backing off. and the intention initially is good. Right? In the beginning of a relationship, you there's very little risk. Right? You can talk about uh, differing opinions about politics or religion or whatever that is, a family. And your, your partner's not really going to reject you at that point. Or even if they do, it's not going to be really devastating. So couples are more inclined to share with each other. And they're more inclined to be accepting of their partner's differing opinions. But as the couple starts to invest more and more in the relationship, and they start now having assets together, they start having kids together, you know, they start having extended family relationships. Now that risk increases. And so couples start to back off about talking about these deeper vulnerable stages because A, they don't want to hurt their partner. They don't want to start a conflict. Um, they don't want to get in trouble, you know. Um, and so, you know, the thing is that that stage of, of of kind of going back up to the surface and the small talk, it can last for a very long time. 
And couples will continue to put things and distractions in the way that prevent them from really getting down deeper into, into those deeper levels. And so at this point, what really needs to happen is an environment of safety. And safety is, you know, when couples are in a really bad place, they're very contemptuous. And you have to stop doing the name calling and stop trying to dive into things that you you haven't put enough energy into this relationship to make those withdrawals. And so we think about relationships like a bank account and the times you have fun, doing new things together, spending time together, those are deposits. And when a relationship is emotionally bankrupt and you're trying to get your partner to see your point of view, they cannot because they're desperately trying to get you to see their point of view. Yeah, you can't take a withdrawal from the bank account if you don't have anything in there, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. How often, you know, we're talking about being vulnerable and I want to talk about how to encourage that in, in ourselves or, or maybe our partner that might be closed off. But can you be too vulnerable in the sense of just putting your feelings out there all the time for your partner and, and not really taking ownership? And you might feel like that's vulnerability, but it seems like it could also be a, a way to really confront what it is, um, that's actually going on. Absolutely. So, you know, it's like balancing anything else in life. Like you wouldn't just walk around naked all the time. You know, there's mm -hmm. appropriate times you have life that has to happen. And that balance between um, going out and doing new things and spending time with other people and working and children and all that. And so a lot of times we talk about the concept of, you know, running your relationship sort of like you would a business you know, businesses have goals and visions and they also have meetings and they have set times during the week or during the month where they look at their relationship and say, how are we doing? What do we really want? And, and that's the space to talk about the vulnerable stuff. But then it's really a great life skill to button that up. And when people are not buttoning that up and going out back into the world, that's where you're seeing people talk about they're at a party and they're doing little jabs to their partner or underhanded comments and they're kind of exposing themselves inappropriately. And so it's important to have a space and time within the week or month that the couple is doing this and then a space where it's not, you know, and a lot of times when people first come to us, we don't want them talking about anything for a while. We want them to go out and try new things and have fun together and be kind to each other before we can teach them that deeper level skill of how to be more emotionally vulnerable and safe with each other. You know, when it comes to balance, unfortunately, in our world today, all relationships are out of balance, just naturally, because of so much distraction that is in our world. You know, you can't go anywhere without your phone giving you all these notifications about all these th things that you have to attend to and obligations. And kids today are busier than kids generations ago and social media, television, meet, you know, just this lack of attention and time put into connecting it. We are already out of balance. And so what we're talking about is really just dedicating time to connecting and, you know, life is going to go on around us and that that's, that's for sure. But if we're not actually dedicating time, just like a company dedicates time to improving themselves then the relationship naturally is going to deteriorate over time. And that those levels of the stages of vulnerability are very fluid. And so you are going to rise back up to the more surface level and not stay at that, those deeper levels and have that connection as you evolve as individuals. The other important thing to remember is most individual people don't get enough time for reflection. So they don't really know themselves. And so what they tend to do is be very reactive. And when we're reactive, we're using that part of our brain that's in fight, flight, or freeze. And so we are not very appropriate in how we're doing that. And, you know, none of us are appropriate in fighting, by the way. No, no. <laughs> all, all couples fight. And not they, even us. When it comes out, it comes out <laughs> ugly. But when you have that time to reflect and know yourself, because the person that you married is gone. The person you were on your wedding day 
long gone. We, we continue to evolve and grow. So we have to do that as individual people. And then we have to bring that back into our relationship. Before we continue on, we're going to take a short break to tell you about our sponsors. Today's episode is brought to you by Dipsy. We're excited about this one. This is interesting (laughs) and new. And if you love that amazing first date, butterflies in your stomach type of feeling, and you're looking for a little excitement on your terms, Dipsy can help you get in the mood with no date required. Whoa. How does that even happen? (laughs) Let us tell you. Dipsy is an audio app full of short, sexy stories and guided sessions that are designed to turn you on and help you get in touch with yourself. Their stories are relatable and immersive, so you feel like you are right there. And there truly is something for everyone, no matter what you're into. They add new content every week, so there's always more to explore. You can find stories about a spontaneous hookup with the hot stranger. Ooh. Interesting. <laughs> Getting closer with that sexy yoga instructor. That's interesting. <laughs> spin instructor. <laughs> or even stories about trying that new toy together. The guided sessions can help you unlock new confidence or heighten intimacy with your partner. So try a new way of getting turned on with Dipsy. For listeners of the show, Dipsy is offering an extended 30-day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash I do. That's 30 days of full access for free when you go to dipsy, D-I-P-S-E-A, stories.com slash I do. DipsyStories.com slash I do. You mentioned earlier that someone would need to feel safe to start to feel vulnerable in the relationship. So if somebody's struggling with feeling safe within their relationship, do you have any exercises for them to start that process? We do. So we, um, the, the main thing is, is to do something new and thrilling together. So if you go to, you know, an amusement park and ride roller coasters, or you take a painting class, something that is activity based. Mm -hmm. So you're not, you're, you're disrupting your normal pattern. Like when people just go out to eat and they do the same thing over and over again, they're not disrupting anything. So you want to be exposing yourself to new things because that stops those patterns and it should be fun. It should be a lot of fun and, and feel good. Just like, you know, that's how we date. And, and then you can also really do some hygiene around your language. And if you're doing any name calling or contemptuous stuff, you know, we call that duct tape therapy, you know, just, if you can't say something kind right now, just don't say it. Mm -hmm. Just let that be a skill that you're learning so that you can find a more appropriate place to let that hindbrain simmer down and get out of fight or flight. So you can engage the emotional limbic system and the uh, frontal cortex, you can have better conversations, but you have to soothe that part of you that's sort of in shock all the time. Most couples are living parallel lives right now where one person is doing their thing, the other person is doing their thing. They share space together. They're almost like roommates. And so when we're talking about building a safe environment together, you're starting really from scratch, you know, focusing on your friendship. You know, when Gene's talking about going out and experiencing new thrilling things, you are now building a bond. You know, you're building a common experience. And most couples are not having any of that. Many of them, maybe they they sit in front of the TV together. You know, they, they count that as quality time, which it isn't. Sometimes they go out with other couples. They think that's quality time, but it isn't. That's friendship time. Or they go out with their kids and they think, you know, this is quality time. No, it's family time. And so that face-to-face time of just looking at your part, being able to look across the table from your partner and not being distracted and really just focusing on just re-energizing and putting more investment in the friendship alone as a base starts that safety, you know, the process of developing that safety. Because, you know, with parallel lives, there's such a gap that what happens is that we fill that gap with resentment. We fill that gap with assumptions and judgment about who our partner is. And we start to make them out to be a monster. Two things that we really recommend that couples do, especially if they're in a fairly contemptuous place, are two favorite exercises of really good face-to-face time. One, 
Ballroom dancing. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Ballroom dancing. You don't have to talk. You just learn how to move together. And the second one, surprisingly, is a couple's photo shoot. If you're working with a good photographer, they're going to have you looking at each other and kissing each other. And, you know, this goes on for like an hour of just getting in all these poses and smiling at each other. And it really infuses a lot of great energy into a relationship. It really builds that, you know, trust at a very, you know, non-threatening way. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's really necessary in order to, you know, be able to make withdrawals on those big ticket items as we were talking about. What would you tell someone, whether individually or if it's someone's partner who has a lot of trouble being vulnerable, like the idea of sharing feelings just terrifies them or... Uh, and I'd like to hear from the perspective of if if someone listening sounds like they identify with that or if they if they want to get that from their partner, uh, what they could say. I would say two things about that. One is journaling. And the reason for that is uh, we we speak from a more emotional and subconscious place when we're writing and, and not typing it out, but literally handwriting it. So each each couple, each person in the couple could maybe come up with a few questions and then the individual people go off on their own and write about it. And so what happens a lot, and this is the second thing I would say is women have a much more uh, sophisticated uh, part of their limbic system that allows them to be more intuitive because, because we're mothers and we have to be able to read our babies to see if they're in danger or to look around and see if other people are a threat to us. And men's brains don't work like that. So a lot of times, and women say three times more words than men. That's and true. a lot of times the women are, are all over their partners and the guys kind of like in shock. And so something we would say duct tape therapy, right? Ask your question and then get the duct tape. Don't answer it. Give that space and time for that. And especially if some journalings happened first, then those emotions are already accessed before it's right next to your partner and you have to answer to them. I would also have to add in there that, you know, we're putting on a caveat that we're not talking about someone that is coming from an abusive situation, right? People who have come from an abusive environment in their past are going to have a lot more trouble being vulnerable, you know, naturally, because, you know, that is a trauma that they have to heal. And so what we're talking about here right now in this conversation is normal couples that go through a normal development of distancing themselves from each other because life gets in the way and other distractions start to erode, you know, that connection between the two of them. It is a three-legged race. And I don't know if you guys know what a three-legged race is. Uh, we, we brought this up on the uh, Couples Weekend Intensive and a lot of people didn't know what it was. But, you know, three-legged race is when you have a partner and you tie your outside legs together And you try to run, you know, in a race. (laughs) And you can see how funny that would be. And some couples would go one direction and go another and they would fall down. And, you know, this is kind of a really good example of what is necessary for a couple to get to those deeper levels of vulnerability. It's, It's a process that happens together. And so if you're not putting time and energy and investment in connecting at a very basic level, then you're not going to be able to get to that place where you are sharing that those deepest, darkest fears, faults, failures with each other, you know, that is necessary in order to get to, to those deeper connections um, in a long-term partnership. What would you say if a situation arises where someone is is sharing, they're they're trying to be vulnerable, but it's it's really uncomfortable for them and and they're doing it, but it's like, it's very difficult. It's not like a an open thing. And maybe they feel exposed like through it and the other partners being compassionate, but it, it's just, uh, it's so uncomfortable because of their history, uh, maybe family or past relationships. What would you tell that individual or that partner to to do to support either themselves or their partner? So one exercise that we teach our couples is something called a cradle hold. And I'm not going to go into the details about it. But the premise here is that having conversations like that is not a conversation. When you are talking about something that is very vulnerable, 
anything your partner says could jeopardize that conversation. It is a one-way conversation. The person who is getting vulnerable, the person who is digging deep, what they really want from their partner is to be supportive. What they want from their partner is to hear them and not supportive in a way that they are giving them feedback or giving them um, solutions you know, to the problem, but really being a witness to their life. And ultimately, that's what a primary partner is. It is a witness to our life. And it is the, the deepest physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual connection we could ever have with another human being. And there is some great risk of being hurt. In fact, it's inevitable that your partner is going to hurt you. And that is what we're talking about here is that when we're being vulnerable, it has to be done in a very, very delicate way. If you think about being around like a four-year-old who is waking up in the middle of the night and they're scared of monsters, you don't walk in that room and say, shut up, there's no such thing as monsters and slam the door and turn the light off. You know, we see them as vulnerable and young. And for adults, we are all have this hurting child inside of us that is way older than our adult self. And so what we do, and these are the behaviors that we teach people, is something we call emotional first aid. So you go in the room and you look at the child, you hold the child, you soothe them, you believe them, and then you help them go, okay, what do we need to help you feel safe? Let's look under the bed. Let's look in the closet. Let's get out the monster spray. We don't negate what they're feeling. We support it. And really just sitting with someone and holding them and saying, I hear you is the most impactful thing we can do. Any type of problem solving begins to make the person shut back down. That's such an important thing to use to, to frame these situations. I listened to a few podcasts about uh, internal family systems or is it integrated family systems? Um, but the, there's both. Oh, okay. Well, well, the one basically of, of going in and, and as you described, like meeting your inner child and showing them compassion and understanding because when we're, when we're vulnerable, when we're hurt, when we're scared, it's really a lot of times coming from early childhood development. And I just followed along to the therapist that was being interviewed of the exercise as they, as they walk through what that looks like. And it was really, really powerful in, yeah, making me feel better and, and safe, I guess, in a way. So if we can do that for ourselves and for our partners to, to look at them as that, that wounded child and how would you treat a four-year-old that's scared, as you said, it's really a powerful way to frame it, but, but not just out of a way to look at it. It's actually, like what's going on. Yeah, that part of our brain has no relationship to time. It's a survival mechanism. And so like the first time you touch a stove, you actually get burned. And then that part of our brain, because it has no relationship to time, if 30 years goes by, your hand automatically is going to pull away from that stove. And then it does another thing. It generalizes and it says, don't touch that stove or anything that feels like that, whether it's a candle or a curling iron or a tail of paper. And so that part of our brain, nothing erodes. And so all these emotional wounds that might have happened at four or seven or 15, they're sitting there. And because there's no relationship to time, we can go back in any stage and apply that emotional first aid and begin a healing process. And Chase, I'm going to take what you said to the next level. And that is that, you know, in our 20, 25 years of, of you know, doing therape therapeutic work, um, we've learned one thing, and that is that we can help people uncover that vulnerability, and we can even help them to a certain extent heal, you know, those wounds that are that are deep inside. But it is ultimately the primary partner that can do the true healing that is necessary, and that is really what is so powerful about a committed partnership: is that your person is the person that can help you heal. And vice versa. And is that by being a witness? It's because of the bond. And so, you know, 
I used to do some work in a school. And when you first started, they would tell you, you cannot help any of these kids unless you connect to them. They have to care what you think and feel about them first. And so your partner is someone you have this bond with and you care very deeply. And so their words are so much more impactful than a therapist or a friend or whoever. And you've had that intimacy with them physically, now emotionally, and and that kind of environment allows for that type of healing because we regulate each other's biorhythms and heart rates, all that kind of stuff. And so it's it's that bond that creates that environment, which is why that person can heal you the most and hurt you the most. That's an interesting dichotomy, mm-hmm. huh? <laughs> <laughs> it it can create a lot of a lot of joy and a lot of hurt but these tools that you're giving us to better understand ourselves and our partners are really what we need and we're not taught this in school and usually not by our parents and so that's why we're so happy to have people like yourselves on the show and and to get this information and be able to share it so Thank you guys so much for for coming on and sharing with us. Before we wrap up, can you tell our listeners where they can find you online? And if there's anything we skipped over or that you want to emphasize before we say goodbye? Uh, They can find us uh, on couplesynergy.com. That's with two S's in the middle, couplesynergy.com. We also have a podcast where we interview couples about their relationships. Uh, That's Couple Synergy, Real Couples, Real Stories. We also host other... uh, people that are instrumental in helping people with relationships as well, whether it's financial people or whatever, all those types of things that we need as relationships. Wonderful. We'll have the links to um, your website uh, in the show notes and in the podcast description. And we really appreciate you taking the time to come on the show today. Thank you so much. much. Yeah. Thanks so much for tuning in to today's show, guys. As always, the links will be in the podcast description as well as on the show notes on our website at idopodcast.com. And while you're on our website, we hope you guys check out our free 14-day happy couple challenge. Uh, It's a challenge where we send you a daily email for 14 days with easy, doable challenges to help strengthen and improve your relationship. And it's honestly just a whole lot of fun to do with your partner. It's something new and we think you guys will really enjoy it. So check it out. And while you're on the website, there are tons of free resources as well as more information about our online course, Spark My Relationship, where our listeners can get $100 off. So check that out. You can go directly to the course website at Spark myrelationship.com slash unlock. And that's where you can get the $100 off. So thank you guys for tuning in and we'll see you next week.